Howdy, friends. Did you know that Spax is actually made in Germany? More than 50 million Spax are produced in Ennibital each day. That's a whole lot, ain't it? So it's quality made in Germany. You'll notice that through the workmanship, believe me. I put a rough figure on it, and I've used around 200,000 Spax in my house. To me, it's obvious that Spax is the best. Some can't decide what to use which Spax for. They're all the same, ain't they? Spax has plenty of different types that you always get the best results without any stress. And you know that you should never save on materials. Come and take a look, and I'll show you my holy shrine. I've set up a new workshop, and I'll show you what you can use all the different types for. So this is my main Spax warehouse, the Texas Outpost. This Spax is different to a cheap screw. Why is it different? The know-how that's put into it. And that's more than you think. The head has a breaking and cutting rib, for example. I'll take one of these Spax. If you take a closer look, you'll see the breaking and cutting ribs on the end. When you screw into a fitting, these are the things that stop the screw rotating when it's far enough. Otherwise, it'd be yanked out. It's flush with the surface of the wood. And I'll show you how it works. Now I'll show you what the braking ribs are for. Great. It hasn't over-tightened. And now the cutting ribs. A smooth finish. The Spax has a patented profile as well. Take a look, from here to here. This means you can work quickly and cleanly without pre-drilling the holes. And I'll show you how this works using another example. This knife has a normal blade. This here is a normal screw without a profile, isn't it? I'll put it on a tomato you can see how I really have to push so it goes through the tomato. Here comes the Spax with a profile. I just need to hold it with two fingers, go back and forwards, and the tomato isn't squashed or anything. That's how Spax works. The screw has a so-called four cut at the very front. If you look closer, you can see a square. This is used so that the wood doesn't cut or split when turning the screw in. This means more safety for you guys. I'll show you. You see, they've really given it some thought, haven't they? And that's not all. There are spack screws with five different head types. The most common one is the so-called flat countersunk screw. You use this one if you want to screw a plate to a beam and the screw should be flush. This here is a spax with a half round head. It lies flat and is particularly suited to slim fittings with a drill hole. I've got a raised countersunk screw here it's easy to screw in and looks good as well. This screw is usually used for furniture or door fittings, skirting boards, or decorative wall paneling. Then there's the round head screw. These little ones are used for screws in back panels, and the bigger ones, between 6 and 10 millimeters, are used when it has to be really strong. They bear a heavy load under high pulling forces. And this is my cylinder head screw here, from Spax of course, just a lot smaller. It screws easily into wood and has a small slot guide. These are used in wood and glass facades and in wood construction as well. All the heads still look different. An expert would call it force application. You know this one from before, the longitudinal slot screw. But no one needs it anymore. 
We got all worked up about it, and Spax didn't have one anyway. Cross recessed head came after that, and that's why Spax is called Spax and not Spa. Spax stands for the German word for board cross recessed head screw. This was developed further and is now called the cross recessed Z. If you look closely, you can see the little fine lines on it. And the latest from Spax is called T Star Plus. The bit is star shaped and has a pin at the end so that transferring the force works even better and the screw doesn't slip off the bit. So now that we've decided on the screw head and the right force application, now you just need to know if you want a screw with a partial or full thread. We can go inside my new house and I'll show you what you can use the different screws for. You use a full thread when you've got high pulling forces such as fittings with a drill hole. I'll show you using my pillar here. Did you hear the breaking ribs? You need partial threads if you want to screw together two planks or beams or if you want to draw a board onto a beam. The important thing is that the part without thread is always as long or at least as long as the board or beam is thick. Did you see? The board is pulled in really tight, just the way it should be. Oh, wait a minute. You want to work inside or out? We use the yellow passivated and the galvanized screws indoors and other ones for outdoors, of course. If you got work to do outdoors, take the Wyrox coated screws if they aren't out in the rain all the time. Because they have 10 times more corrosion protection than the galvanized ones. You can use them in this sort of construction. If things get harder, I mean weather-wise, then it's best to use a SPAC stainless steel. They're available in A2 for normal use. Then there are the A4 screws that are resistant to salt water. You could even build yourself a harbor like I'm doing. These screws will manage it. <laughs> 